Yeah. <laughs> you have been following this all weekend, so I know. why don't you take the first question? All right, so um, can, this is the first time that we're getting you on camera right now. Uh, what would you like to say about everything that happened in Boston? Well, you know, fundamentally, look, uh, as you know, I have been saying for a long time that when I travel, I never stop working, so I like to take these services and talk to the drivers and understand the regulatory environment under which they operate. It's helped us a lot. It's helped me a lot in understanding the development of our own system here. That's why I can confidently say that our proposed regulations are smack in the middle of what happens around the world. And in fact, even on this ride, I learned a lot. And in fact, I, I learned something a bit troubling around how insurance is enforced uh, on all of this. Now, all of that said, that's not what people are interested in. People are interested in two things. Number one, why is the mayor so mean? Uh, and number two, uh, how does the city investigate these things? And you know, I want to say number one, it doesn't matter that I didn't know that I was being live streamed or whatever. Uh, you should be the same person in private as in public. And I always call for civility and being nice. And I wasn't being very nice. Uh, it's a bit embarrassing, of course, because I never swear. And that's probably the rudest word I've ever said. So to get caught up on that is not much fun, uh, though I'm sure many people uh, have called me that name many, many, many times. Uh, but I'm sorry about that. That wasn't right. It wasn't fair. It wasn't nice. And it wasn't civil. I'm a better person than that. And I should be better than that. On the second question of what the city does or does not do, you know, I think most citizens would expect that the regulator regulates and that we don't just come up with policy prescriptions on what we think a background check should be out of thin air. We actually have to figure out what works and what doesn't work. Um, that said, uh, you know, I have said before uh, many times that we know anecdotally that someone made it through the process uh, who had a criminal conviction. And I think Calgarians deserve to know that. And if I made, and I did make, um, I, I, I made allegations that it was, went further than that, and that's not fair, that's not right. The limit of my knowledge is the limit of what I've already told the public, which is that we know anecdotally that someone slipped through. And I'm very sorry that I made it sound like there was a lot more to it than that. And I know the city will be bringing forth a, a statement with a little more detail uh, in an hour or two. But sir, uh, as we heard this morning that there is a live investigation a live, a live a court live action. Court you, action. you guys hang um, out at the courthouse. But, but why were you speaking about it? Hmm? Because remember that the action is on the injunction against the drivers, not against Uber. As a matter of fact, the issue on the background checks is solved. It's settled. Council has passed the bylaw. The province has further uh, passed a further regulation. So that's done. That's settled. So it wasn't inappropriate to speak about it? Well, you know, I don't think it was. Um, certainly, Council would like the Integrity Commissioner to give an opinion on that, but uh, I'd be surprised if he found that, but that it's his purview. You've been During advocating for an Integrity Commissioner for some time. Did you ever think that you would be the subject <laughs> of the first complaint? Oh, I always knew I'd be the subject of the first complaint because people complain about me more than anything else. Uh, it's just I didn't think it would be in a cab in Boston. Did you, during the conversation in the end with, the Lyft, with the Lyft driver, did you reveal details of the city's enforcement operation that you should have done? No. Then where, where does this, the, the comment about sex offenders and violent criminals, where well, does that come from? As I mentioned to you when we talked about this earlier, Mr. Howell, uh, you're conflating two different sentences, and you should. I mean, it's fair to conflate those two different sentences. But we've said from the very beginning that there were two concerns about Uber's background check process. Concern number one is that it didn't necessarily check registered sex offenders, and concern number two was that people with convictions might slip through that process. And I was referring to both of those things, and I did so very, very badly, and I confused them. So we're 100% the city did not send in? I can't answer that question, but the city will issue a statement this afternoon. Why can't you answer that question? Because I can't answer that question because I don't know. I think I said that already. Okay. I don't know. Um, because I shouldn't know. Because when politicians, <laughs> when politicians know about operational issues around investigations and stuff, the temptation for politicians to get involved is too great. And uh, yeah, you're right. I implied it and I've apologized for that, but that's that. When you said in council that this is one of the first times that now we're being asked how did the city find out about it because you said this is a question that no one has asked since but the media has asked that many times did you mean the media or did you mean council, council. What did you mean council mm -hmm. i know you guys have asked what answers have you been getting <laughs> maybe you'll get a little more this afternoon anyone so, else on anything else so you don't know what the city's investigative methods were or you can't talk about again the city will talk about that this afternoon I think I've made myself pretty darn clear anyone else on anything else we did just pass the tax rate folks we should ask about that. <laughs> anyone want to know about that uh, tell us the, city's, <laughs> uh, the, the council did pass its portion unanimously but 
it did not pass unanimously the, the final bill. Can you explain why? Well, that's right. So what happens is when we pass the budget uh, every year, we then have to wait for the province's requisition in their provincial budget. They're always behind us. We always pass our budget at the end of November. The council, um, the province usually does theirs in January or February or March sometimes. Uh, in any case, sometimes April. In any case, we have the requisition now, so usually this debate, which we call property tax finalization, is um, just boilerplate. We have the same vote that we had on our personal budget. A couple of members of council chose today to sort of make a political statement that they didn't like the province's requisition and vote against it. That said, we have to pay the province's requisition. We don't have a choice. They send us a bill and we have to pay the bill. So it was, a, it was a bit odd for the members of council to vote against it knowing we really didn't have a choice. Uh, but I was happy that they made clear that they weren't, weren't voting against the budget that they themselves had voted for in the autumn. Are you going to be, a lot of people said the uh, councillors were holding their noses in this vote and they voted for it. Are you going to be expressing any displeasure with the provincial government over the fact that they came in with a 10.2% tax hike? Well, I mean, I'm clearly not very happy about it, but I also want to be fair. And it was the previous provincial government that actually put a formula for the requisition. There never used to be a formula. And the formula is that it will cover 32%, I think is the number, of education expenditures. So they weren't doing anything untoward. They were following their formula. It's just they're spending more money on education, and therefore the property tax requisition went up. Um, you know, I'm not very pleased about it. I hope people won't be too mad at the city, because it is the provincial tax thing. But at the end of the day, the province felt the need to increase education expenditure, and they've got a formula that requires them to increase the taxes the same amount. Any advice for the homeowners if they're unhappy with 6.1? Well, if you're unhappy with the provincial part, talk to your MLA. If you're unhappy with the city part, talk to your councillor. That said, um, you know, the budget did pass unanimously this year. It's lower than it was intended to be. It's the first time a budget has passed unanimously in decades, I'm told. Uh, and, you know, the, we had over 24,000 Calgarians give us input into it. So I'm very, very comfortable with the city portion of this budget. Are you frustrated that you did work to get that number down? And when a lot of people see it, they won't know the distinction between city yeah. and provincial. They'll just look at it and go, boy, there's a big tax hike there. What, what are they doing at City Hall? Well, yeah, of course, I'm a little bit frustrated by that, but it's the system under which we operate. And, you know, my only job is to explain the situation as clearly as I can. Okay. On the other issue, sir, oh just my to gosh, clarify, what? can you, now? You, Last question, did, you did discuss with the ethics advisor yeah. on, on your comments, what guidance did she give you? She was remarkably undisturbed by the entire situation. Um, she said, you know, as long as you were being candid and honest, uh, the fact that you used a not very nice word really is irrelevant. And then she pointed out to me that she herself swears like a trucker, so maybe she'll learn. She'll teach me uh, a few new words. Thank you. Thanks, folks.